get started here. Uh, my name is Brian Wells. Thank you again so much for the time. I guess as a couple of the folks who have come in here, I'll, I'll kind of reiterate any questions that you have since we're all muted. Uh, please feel free to type those into the chat and we will get those to Tony, our moderator, uh, to address. Obviously, this is uh, for your edification and want to make sure that we, uh, we tackle any questions that you've come to this, this webinar with. Um, with that, I wanted to introduce our presenter today, Tony Sterling. Tony is a, he's a senior technical lead at Keep It. Uh, he's going to walk us through this presentation. He is a hyper-focused customer first leader with, I would say, at least 20 years of experience in the data management and security world. And that would be both on-prem and, of course, in the cloud. Uh, Tony has worked with many motion, multinational companies over the years to help them migrate to the cloud and, and really to better manage their enterprise applications. He's got vast experience in making customers successful, whether that be a small business or a large, again, international company. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Tony to give us a, a, an intro to really what, what Keep It is and, and really its valuable role here in the data security world. So um, again, I'll say keep the questions, uh, well, keep them coming, none yet, but bring any questions to the chat and I'll, I'll surface those to Tony and we'll pause along the way. So Tony, thanks so much for the time here. We appreciate it um, and uh, take it, turn it over to you. Awesome, you know, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. So. Um, as the as mentioned please let's keep it interactive really no questions off limit you know if you want to know my favorite scotch is mccallan or if it's about data protection i'm happy to address those as well so my name is tony sterling i am a senior director of customer success here at keep it and keep it as an organization is focused on protecting SaaS backup workloads so our application was purpose-built in the cloud for the cloud and why i just don't want to talk about um, keep it as an application, I wanna give you guys some best practices when it comes to protecting your data, some things to consider, right? So why do you even need backup strategy for SaaS? So here's seven reasons, certainly many more than this, but you know, as you start to think about your SaaS workloads, you wanna avoid dependency having everything in one cloud. You know, if we think about best practice, backup best practices, you know, there's a three, two, one model, right? So, well, how does that translate to cloud and to SaaS? I mean, we need to really start thinking about updating some backup terminology from on-prem to cloud. And then the ability to set your retention policies, how long do we need to keep this data once it's deleted out of the SaaS workload? How long do you wanna keep it in the backup? Do you have compliance issues that need to be addressed? And what happens if something's deleted? You know, there are recycle bins available in many workloads, but do you really want to depend on a trash can <laughs> for your backup, for your recovery strategy? And those lengths of times vary. You know, and then think about how data loss could really affect you. How, how much data loss can you, how, data can you afford to lose without it impacting business? Uh, ransomware is, something that we read about um, you know weekly it seems like you know those attacks are continuing to get more sophisticated microsoft even advises that ransomware attacks are becoming more sophisticated and more effective and there's no slowdown in um, those attacks from occurring and then of course being able to have roles-based administration you know in order to do a backup in most SaaS workloads, for example, Microsoft 365, in order to do a restore, you need to be a global admin. Well, how many global admins do you need to fit your organization at that point? You know, Microsoft advises having as few global admins as possible. So how do we enable IT administrators to recover data, but without actually having to promote everybody to a global admin? Some things that we're gonna consider. Now, you may have seen this, maybe not, but we call this the uh, shared responsibility model. So on the left side, you're gonna see the SaaS provider's responsibilities. This is what Microsoft, Google, Salesforce, um, you know, what these providers, this is their responsibility, right? They provide you the application, the or corresponding hardware, taking care of the infrastructure. But when it comes to the data, this is your data. This is your responsibility. If a user accidentally deletes something, you're, it's up to you to be able to recover that. If a user makes a configuration mistake, you lose a lot of data, again, you know, there's, your SaaS provider is going to be limited on what they can do for you because it's just not their responsibility. And then of course, protecting the environment, securing it against ransomware, virus, malware, 
those various topics. You know, you want to be very cognizant of your responsibilities when it comes to your data in these SAS platforms. Gartner, very well-known firm, released a study by 2022. So in uh, about what, 21 days, 70% <laughs> of organizations will have suffered a business disruption, disruption due to an unrecoverable data loss in a SaaS application. So it's not so much if it will happen, it's when it will happen. And for many companies, it has happened. Then when we look at the reasons for data loss, you know, I, I mentioned ransomware. Obviously, ransomware, ransomware, malware is a concern. But as you can see, by far, the vast majority is human error. You know, they accidentally deleted something. You know, they, you know, an administrator makes a change to a configuration uh, that, that has unintended consequences. But we can't neglect how impactful ransomware and, um, and viruses are to your data. All right. Actually, Tony, we got our first question. Pardon me. For oh, perfect. Yeah. A uh, little bit of a fragment sentence here. It's coming from John uh, regarding ransomware proact proactive versus reactive. So, are we talking mm -hmm. reactive or proactive approaches here for ransomware? I'm sure if you want to add color to that, John, but is that, does that make any sense uh, to you there, Tony? Uh, yeah, as as I, reactive I told, or proactive? Yes, I totally understand what he's asking, right? So, what your backup provider is going to do is allow you to be able to respond to an attack. So Microsoft, for example, they spend billions of dollars in um, help, you know, securing the environment. You know, they have different defenders, you know, for Microsoft 365, for, you know, Azure Office products. And then, of course, there's, you know, a variety of security companies out there helping you secure against the attack, right? But, you know, the the biggest cause for an attack is um, it, it sort of goes back to human error, right? So it, ransomware is only effective if someone clicks the executable. Okay, you you have these zero day viruses that occur that happen, and at that point we have you know you have to have the ability to respond. So what Keep It does for our customers allow them we're not preventing the ransomware attack, we're allowing them to recover from the ransomware attack and what we are preventing is the extended downtime or data loss due to those attacks. So helping customers, you know, I mentioned the need to update some terminology, right? So if we think about RTO, recovery time objective, and RPO, recovery point objective, what does that mean in our modern SaaS-based world, right? So the recovery time objective traditionally is how long it would take to get the data restored so that your users have access to it. What we at Keep It allow customers to do is take that RTO, no longer the data has to be 100% restored back to the workload, we can provide access to that data to the users in the backup. And so take the RTO from hours, days, weeks, and make it minutes by giving them access to good copies of the data in the backup. Great question, thank you so much. Yeah, perfect, uh, there's actually one more if I can. Is this yes. enterprise, is this enterprise, uh, enterprise? Traffic um, data. So I don't know if you can so, comment on that with enterprise or application specific. So I'm I'm guessing the question is, you know, the type of data we're protecting, right? So we do have enterprise customers, you know, but what we're talking about are the SaaS workloads. So, so specifically Microsoft 365, we're talking Exchange, OneDrive, SharePoint, Groups and Teams, Azure AD. For Google Workspace, we're talking Mail, Calendar, you know, the the user data inside of uh, Google Workspace for Salesforce.com. It's going to be the data inside of Salesforce.com. And the same with Dynamics 365 CRM, the data, metadata inside the application is what we're protecting. Okay. I hope that answered the question. It looks like it did. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. So, uh, you know, here I am, you know, obviously I work for Keep It. Uh, I, you know, I can tell you stuff, but I, I have these, I call them the expensive examples. Okay, so and you know, you may know these, you may not, but you know, in the first scenario, what happened was a company was migrating the Office 365, and they had a consultant on site to help them make that transition. They became unhappy with his performance. They reached out to the vendor, had him replaced on the project. 
So he gets replaced on a project. Um, they send a new consultant out to complete the, the migration for this company. First consultant ends up getting fired and has to move back to his home country. And after a period of time, he held a grudge. So he hacks into the company that he was working for and deletes 1,200 of their 1,500 users from Office 365. So these people come into work one day and they don't have access to Exchange. They don't have access to OneDrive or Teams, which you know Teams is mission critical to most companies these days. So for two days, this company was down. Customers couldn't get a hold of them. They couldn't get hold of customers because they didn't know who to call. And into, you know, into this story, it took them over three months and over $500,000 to recover from this scenario. You know, that's where you say, what if I had backed up off Azure AD? And then in another well-known example, this was in a malicious attack. This was simply an IT admin wanting to apply a retention policy for one user, makes a change, hits apply, and the team's chat information for 145,000 users is gone. You know, so uh, KPMG, well-known company again, um, you know, they, they looked into or try to recover it, right? So they engaged with Microsoft and Microsoft was able to confirm that, yes, the data is gone and no, it can't be recovered. So you know, think about, you know, here's, you know, an IT admin, he's doing what's, you know, he, what he thinks is the right thing to do. And all of a sudden information is gone, can't be recovered. How would that impact you? You know, maybe not on a scale of 145,000 users, but I know me is like, if I lost all my chats and, and some my data, it would it would greatly impact my ability to do work. And, you know, I, I don't remember anything anymore. I got everything in my, you know, my chats and in my OneDrive. So it's a, it's a great point, Tony, because and, and it really comes back to sort of the why. Um, you know, Microsoft doesn't keep this, right? I mean, when I, you know, I, I haven't, you know, the company that we work at have we have not suffered a a, a breach that, that is a uh, you know that has impacted to my knowledge, um, you know, things like chats or something. But if it had, I think the right. first thing on top would be Microsoft keeps a record of all that, don't they? And yeah. you know, it's stunning that it really is no, they don't, right? I mean, it, it's past just the shared service, you know, shared responsibility that we all have and, and, and kind of whether it's fine print or, or bold, they're not keeping exactly. records of your chat for a variety of reasons. So, um, I mean, it's exactly. just, you know, there, are, out. there are different recovery options for different workloads and they vary from workload to workload, right? So for exchange, there's a recovery recycle bin, same with OneDrive, SharePoint groups and teams, but the, the length of time varies. And sometimes that recycle bin can be bypassed. Like for the example with the, uh, you know, with the 1200 users being deleted, you know, he didn't just delete the users and leave them in the recycle bin. No, he, he bypasses the recycle bin or purge the recycle bin. And in that scenario, you're just, you're out of luck. You're starting from scratch to rebuild. Now on this slide, you know, I love this slide. There's a lot here. I'm not gonna read it to you, but we just wanna talk about some different things, right? So obviously I think keep it is the right solution, but regardless of who you go with, these are your key considerations. You wanna make sure that the backup vendor is going to be able to help you. One, I, we call it the dataverse coverage, right? So when it comes to Microsoft, how complete is the coverage for the various workloads? When it comes to Teams, you know, Teams is still I call it emerging technology. It's been around for a few years, but you know, it, there's a lot of um, priority from Microsoft being put into Teams. You know, it's being developed. You know, when the pandemic hit, people started working from home. Teams became mission critical. And you know, I was doing helping back then. I was doing tenant to tenant migrations, and when it came to Teams, you know, Microsoft was doing everything they could to keep it stable because the uptick of growth on it was just enormous. So now Teams is as critical if maybe more than exchange so when it comes to being able to protect private channels being able to you know protect the the chats and the files and the wiki you know just the various components of it and not just for teams right but let's talk about salesforce and um you know D dynamic crm and um google and then now with azure active directory our newest offering how complete is the coverage and then when it comes to not just backing it up, see, it's backup and recovery, okay? So if I can back something up, that's fine, but if I have, if the steps to recover it isn't easy and 
fast and efficient, and I'm not restoring the data in a near original uh, usable format to my end users, then we're doing a disservice, right? So, you know, when it comes, let's talk about Teams channel chats, for example, a lot of folks still, when they go to restore that, all they will give you is an HTML file in the files tab. Is that really useful to your end users? Are they going to be able to quickly get back to work? Are they going to have to spend a lot of time just looking through an HTML file to try to find the relevant information and then recreate that information in a usable format? So is the data gonna be restored in the original format? What is the level of granularity when it comes to being able to recover? So like Dynamics 365, has some built-in capabilities to do the backup, but if I just need to restore one user record, one account record and the associated metadata, I can't do that natively. I have to do a full restore. So you need just some important things to think about. Then, with, uh, yeah, please. Sorry, Tony, yeah, John, John again, another question. Um, John, that's really our first question. On-prem and SaaS workloads, are we treating them the same or different as a solution for SaaS only? And then he follows it up by saying, is the data being backed up into the public cloud like Azure or AWS? How does that work? Right, uh, right. Questions there. <laughs> great question, great questions. So let's let's break it down a bit, right? So if the first thing was on-prem versus SaaS, are we trying to back those up the same way, right? Well, if your solution that you're looking at is attempting to take their legacy backup and just bolt on, um, you know, some functionality to backup cloud, then they're, they've already started doing it wrong, right? Because you, know, you have to treat those things differently because when it's, when it's on-prem, you own the entire infrastructure, you own all that hardware, you know, you can do what you want to with it. But when you utilize SaaS workloads, you, again, that SaaS provi uh, shared responsibility model, when, you know, on the left pane, the SaaS providers, you know, taking care of the infrastructure, it's your data, right? So we have to be able to back that up one, in a way that doesn't interfere with your ability to access the SaaS workloads. Like, you know, Microsoft has some throttle in them. It's even Salesforce and Google has some limits on how much data you're going to be able to back up and recover. So is your application going to play nicely with that? And then are you, to, in order to back it up, are you going to have to deploy infrastructure, for example, a VM in Azure running an agent so that you're able to then back up the data and take that data and move it to, you know, you mentioned, is it being stored in AWS or Azure? So with keep it, you know, data storage, the, the bullet point second from the, the bottom on the left, we own the entire technology stack. When we design our product, again, is built in the cloud for the cloud. Sounds like a marketing line, but there's, there's just the best way to say it. We have independent data centers. We don't depend on AWS. We don't depend on Azure. So this week, AWS had a significant outage, affected many applications. We weren't harmed by that because we keep, we, we are building out the infrastructure. We currently have five across the globe, two data centers in each region where we keep four copies of a customer's data so that we're able to uh, give them those four or five nines of protection, 99.99% availability. So that in the event you need access to the backup data because you don't have access to the production data, we're able to, to do that for you. Yeah, that's a great point. And we don't have, this isn't a question, but you know, when you bring up, and it's not a cost per se, but when you say you've got independent um, cloud providers that you work with or your own, your own that you've built up, um, yes. egress charges, right? Like what does that mean? Exactly, uh, no, yeah, no egress, no ingress charges, right? So you want your data out, you can take your data out. It's up to you. You know, whereas if you're utilizing Azure or AWS, somebody's got to pay for it. And if your vendor isn't charging you for it, then what they're doing is using a concept, concept that's called tier storage. So uh, you know, maybe 30 days worth of your backups will be on fast storage, but then after that it gets moved to cold storage. And there's is your recovery uh, time objective, recovery point objective. How long will it take to pull that data back and put it into the cloud application? Whereas we keep it, all our data is, whether it was backed up yesterday or a year ago, you have that same quick response to be able to restore data very as fast as the SaaS vendor will allow. And then you mentioned the pricing, right? So moving that data in and out of Azure, you know, sometimes you have to pay for that. Um, you know, we have we don't have those egress charges. We just use a fixed transparent pricing model. You know, it's based on number of active users. So the only way your uh, license cost goes up is if 
you're doing great business and you're adding a bunch of people and you go from 1500 to 1600 users or 15,000 to, you know, six, you know, that's the only time you go up is when you're consuming more, which most people understand. Then, you know, look, when you're considering, um, you know, your options, make sure that the search capabilities, you know, have that ability to search across all the workloads very efficiently and quickly and to be able to go back to any point in time and find the data, the good copies of the data that you're looking for, make, it has to be easy to use. I mean, you know, I talked about, you know, it's gotta be easy to recover, you know, so you have to, you know, there are lots of, um, there are a few options out there for you when it comes to it. Some, you know, there's a long uptick, right? And to learn how to manage it. With our application, it was designed for IT admins that don't have a lot of time so that it's very native, you know, point and click if you need be, or the ability to do search if you want, just simple. You know, there's no need to go through training. I, yes. And not to labor it, but can you, can you drill into that? Because it is very granular. If I am absolutely, if I am one department in a large multinational credit card company that lost all of my whatevers, right? We don't need to do some massive up restore and take care of everything. So can you, t can you drill into a little bit? How granular can it get? I mean, can I just restore 50 people, one person? I, how does that work, or is it just snapshots of time? I, you yeah. know, my, uh, my ignorance, but I appreciate it. No, no worries. See, we back up everything at the object level. So you can be as granular as restoring a permission on a SharePoint site for a specific user. When it comes to restoring user data, if you need to restore a bunch of their data, you know, like your example, right? So I have 50 users that were impacted. I can select those 50 users and restore their data. Now, maybe I don't need to restore all the data for some of the users. I, you know, maybe it's just a folder in a, you know, with a SharePoint site, someone deleted a data folder, you know, they didn't mean to, but hey, it's gone and no one noticed it in time to be able to recover it. You just go in, restore that data folder, leave the rest of the SharePoint site intact. Same way with documents, even teams, you know, chat files to channel chats and teams, you can get very specific and just restore what's needed. So you know, sometimes you want to, you need a broadsword, sometimes you need a scalpel. Our, our solution offers that uh, functionality. Good stuff. Thanks. All right. So uh, security is one thing I really want to hit on, right? It's because, you know, I, you know, as I mentioned, we own the technology stack. We developed our own uh, technology. It's, so when we back up our customers' data, it is stored in a mutable format. We utilize, it's a blockchain-like technology, Merkle Tree to be more specific, if you know what that is. But this long and short of it is, it can't be changed once it's backed up. So if a customer is affected by ransomware and that ransomware propagates through one user, many users, whatever, it backs up, the, you know, corrupts that data in the SaaS workload, we always have a good copy of that data. And we can go back to that point in time, give customers access to that data while it's in the backup to allow them to work while the remediation is occurring. Then once the remediation has occurred, we're stored good copies of that data back into the workload allow them to get back to work very quickly. So you want to make sure that the data is going to be tamper proof. You want, you know, good SSO and MFA options available and make sure that your vendor is adhering to, you know, those ISO 27001, those different standards, to, you know, and not be dependent upon somebody else to provide that security for them. All right. So I know we're, we've got about five minutes left, so um, just really, real quick, talk through a couple of real life customer examples. You know, so Saxo Bank's one of our customers. And, you know, they looked at what Mac Microsoft had to offer and really came away unimpressed, right? They didn't want to have to depend on a trash can. If they had a disaster, they didn't want to have to go out to the dumpster to try to find something. You know, so when they came to us and um, we were able to quickly get them up and going. You know, it, our deployments typically take from minutes to a couple hours at the most. We have a 35,000 seat hospital that it took two hours to deploy their configuration and then they were, they were being backed up and protected. So here you can see a real life example of companies that have, uh, this bank as a matter of fact, that looked at the, the solutions available natively and decided that, hey, we need to keep it. And then another, um, oh, what happened? There we go, sorry. There we go. Uh, Pilgrim is another one. So, you know, 
Pilgrim used to, they, they had a robust IT department, lots of outsourcing occurred. And so they needed something that's going to be easy to manage. They, they weren't going to be able to dedicate five people to backup and recovery, right? So they needed something very easy to use. And they, again, they were under the impression that Microsoft was backing up their data. Once they found out it wasn't the case, they went looking for a solution and came to us and chose us because we were, you know, we keep it simple. It's easy to use, intuitive, and once the initial configuration is done, it's just going to run in the background and be there when you need it. Yeah, uh, one last question. It says per, well, not one last, please can come uh, per seat. Yeah. Is that based on what? I don't know. I guess that's minimum config. So you can go 10 users or that scales all the way up to, to your point so, 10,000, correct? Right? Yeah, it's based, you know, so we license based on active users. And so, so for example, let's say you're um, an 1800, you, you have 1800 licenses for Office 365. And you're, you know, you we're backing up, you choose us, but you're only using, you, you only have 1,500 active users, you know? Well, you'd need to license 1,500, and then we would be able to back up all your users for you. And then let's talk about, well, somebody leaves. So now you have 1,499, but then you replace them. So now you're back up to 1,500. So what happens with Keep It is you, we just swap those, those out, and then we will keep the departed user data in the backup for whatever your retention period is. So you get the benefit of an archive solution with our Keep It Backup and Recovery for SaaS. So, and we no longer charge you for that. We will keep that data in our backup. If it's a one year retention, it will be there for one year after the user left, five years, you get the idea for free. Shared mailboxes are included. You know, so we, we have a, you know, very simple pricing model again based on active users yeah and, and i'll um you know to continue on the simplicity the amount of data with which we store is never an issue i think it's it's near unlimited exactly. for, for what you want right now that that precludes some of the smaller enterprise clients that we work with but it is not you know you're not dinged on as data grows the charts which you'll be having to to pay for so i think that's a really nice flexible licensing model exactly and so this is my last slide i want to show you guys we call these the key commandments Okay, so what you just touched on there is under cost effective. One price per seat, unlimited storage and archiving included. So whether you have, you know, 50 gig, 500 gig, you know, it doesn't matter. We offer you unlimited storage. And it's not tiered. Again, it's, you know, we're not utilizing cold storage. Yep. All right, two minutes. And I'd love to answer any questions if they're out there or... No other questions here. Um, we got about four or five. If anybody's got a question, feel free to enter it uh, here in the yeah. chat, and I will ask. So no, no, uh, no other questions, Tony. So I guess um, we can pivot. Uh, thank you so much for the time. You know, I think you know, as a you know, as a partner here of Keep It, um, I will say that you know, this this tool not only demos fantastically, it also POCs uh, fantastically. So if there is any interest in bringing this into your enterprise, we have a a real, uh, you know, a risk adverse sort of way to bring it in, show it to yourselves, show it to stakeholders. I'll always um, do a POC. Always. Some of it's too good to be true. Yeah. So, so it's our pleasure to, to go ahead and do that and, and um, you know, anything there. So no other questions, Tony. Um, we will post this, everyone, on uh, both Ironside and, and keep its uh, portal for, for view. Certainly, if anybody has any questions on uh, follow-ups, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, and Tony, thank you so much for the time. We greatly appreciate awesome. it. Well, well, thanks for having me. And, uh, yeah, th thank you so much. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you all. Bye-bye.